Good morning and welcome back to Planner Craft. I'm Natalie and today we're going to be finishing off the road signs from yesterday. And Ian is a man in the comments, so say hi. Morning. There you go. <laughs> hi Mum. So we'll just wait for a few more people to join before I get started. So I've pulled out some blue, white, black and red cardstock. Now I've tried to stick to more or less the same thickness, but the white is a little bit thicker, so we're probably going to end up cutting that twice. Give it a little bit longer. Just a little, come on, people. <laughs> Well, the multi stream, yeah, it, mm -hmm. it usually works. Right, you got a few more. They're fine, you must move them. Okay, cool. So, first of all, let's have a look at our work. If you want to go back to close cam, yeah. So, we have our items arranged by colour. So we have a black there, a white there, a red and a blue. We have some draw, drawn elements. So what we need to do before we do anything else is take those out. So remember this file is saved on the USB so we can come back to it at any point. So I'm just going to take out those little drawn elements for now. might just delete the whole one out, maybe. It doesn't say it's grouped. And it says morning. Morning! I need to get to the little drawn bits in. It is grouped because you grouped, grouped it yesterday. So yeah, it I'll have to delete it as a whole one. Okay, we'll come back and do that one after. That's okay, I can delete it all. So, with our card, we're going to cut it into strips. And if we look at our designs, we can kind of use our squares on our mat to actually count how wide that we need them to be. Mm -hmm. So if we look at our triangle, which is probably the widest, you can see that's just under two inches wide. So I'm going to go for strips that are two and a half inches wide. So Nikki says good morning and so is Deb. Morning Nikki, morning Deb, morning Linda. So let's bring in my trimmer. And I'm gonna go up to that two and a half mark. We could actually put a link up for the trimmer, couldn't we? The range. Yeah. Mm. Oh, right, okay. I'll pop it up in the group after. Here, the thickness of that white card by comparison. And now, with blue, we don't actually need as much. So, if I count down the squares on the map this time, probably about two tall, and it's only just over an inch. So, what I'm going to do. Is let's move my blade back up to the top. I'm going to go to one and a half. Like so. I'm going to rotate my card. There we go. 
that should be enough for what I need. So just double check, it's over two and over one. Yep. So there we go. That's all we need of that little piece. So we can move those out of the way. And I can bring in the cutting mat. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to give it a quick clean. So I just use a limp holder. dusty bits off of it. So we start off with our black and that's going to line up into that top corner. Hmm? Yeah I could have but I'll probably end up using it for something else anyway so I don't mind. The blue was probably just might be the only pop of blue on the page so so then we've got our white and we've got our red. And then finally we have our blue. Like so. So then we're going to do a background scan and then we're going to realign all of those elements up to their respective colours. Load the mat. So I'm going to go OK. Background scan. Morning, Carol. And let's start that off. Morning, Carol. So we can see the blue and our design over it. We can see the white and again the design over it. But we can't see the black and the red. So the way around that is you're going to press on the spanner. We're going to lighten that background. Go OK. And then we can see where we're going. So we can still use our move so that we can nudge rather than hand drag. Yeah. And you just want to make sure you're well in from those edges. And move that black one across too. And move that one down a bit because we've got plenty of room. And we can go OK. Now, most of this has been built with basic shapes, so I'm going to use the standard auto blade. Go OK. You'll see my pressure is minus nine and my speed is one. And off we pop. Now, it started on thicker card, which is annoying. 
So, before it starts trying to cut that black, I'm going to stop it. Okay, quick cutting. Okay. So we know that blade set for that thicker card. So if we were to let that cut on our thinner card, you risk two things. One, that it will snag the card and rip your design. Or two, it will cut through your mat. So, rather than risk that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. Now, the one thing you don't want to do at this point is save and overwrite. So I'm going to take out all these other elements. So it's just going to cut those white lines first. We can always put the others back in after. So how are you all this morning? I haven't done my usual don't be afraid to ask questions. There's no such thing as a silly question if I this morning. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to go OK, home to reset. Back to retrieve data, back to our USB, down to the bottom and scroll back up. Okay. So now I'm going to go into edit. And our mat hasn't moved, so we don't need to redo that background scan. I'm going to take out that one. Let's do multi select. So. We want to take out that column, OK. Delete, OK. <laughs> yeah. So now we can nudge these where we want to put them. Back across that way. And go there. Okay, okay, and back to cut.
I just remember what else we were supposed to be doing this morning before we went live. Sorting out a um, challenge from last month. Yeah. Yeah. There's um several on the group. vinyl. So there's quite a few vinyl projects if you go onto the book to have a look at. There's a wall art one which is really funky off the top of my head. So there's all sorts of scale and complexity to look at which is going to be interesting for us to uh, and pick out. <laughs> oh, is, is is that a, a kind of this size parcel, Carol? <laughs> okay, so let's just check before we go too far. Yep, that's, that's all cut. That one's cut. So the last one to do is our very bottom side, so I'm going to go OK, reset again, retrieve, USB, down to the bottom, kind of it, maybe, maybe, <laughs> we're hoping a parcel's coming today aren't we, yeah. so I'm going to go OK, and I'm going to go to multi-select, window select, And all those can just be deleted because we've done all those already. So the last one to do is our little triangle down the bottom. Now the reason that I've left that to last is because when you're working on your machine everything is a cut and draw line. So that means if we were to go to cut at this moment with that on the mat not only is it going to cut out that outside triangle it's also going to try and cut out that tiny text which is the last thing we want. So what we need to do first of all is to do our draw and then we'll show you from there where we're going to go next. Okay. Pen now. Which pen should we go for today? You need a black one. No, I do need a black one, you're quite right. Shall I go for, uh, for a doodler? going for a black fashion doodler so this is just a um, normal gel pen um, but it's not water resistant so if you want to watercolour with it you can do and there's no sparkle in this one so there you go so I've just loaded that into my pen holder and the pen holder for those of you that are new is the 3D fun prints pen holder if you're into our competition, you can remember. Yep. You may be selected to receive one. You've still got some of Yeah, just a few. So I'm going to go OK. OK again. I'm going to go to draw. And when we were drawing last time, we were obviously using. I think for a five, that's probably a felt tip or something like that. So, what we need to do is we need to slow that back down because we were using a gel pen. And pressure wise, let's lighten it up a bit. So, I'm going to go to minus four just because it's a fairly new pen and we don't want it to blob everywhere. So, let's go okay. 
Oh, look at start. Now it's going to say attach appropriate holder because it's not the brother pen holder that's in there. So just go OK and start again. Then the other error that it likes to pop up with is the scanner lever. So on the side of your DX, doesn't apply for CM models, but on the side of your DX is a little lever and that controls the position of your scanner. So when we are drawing, we want to lift it up to two so that it's lifting it and that, that scan glass away from where you're drawing. So the idea being that then your ink isn't going to smudge on your scan glass. That's the theory anyway. So, we'll go OK and start again. So now it's doing that fill. And there we go. So if we had told it to do that fill, the centre of that four would have been lost. So rather than trying to fill that in after, I think I'm just going to leave that as is. So there we go. We can take our pen back out, pop its lid back on, and we're almost there. Now all we need to do is to cut out that triangle. Now, at the moment, because it's grouped, it's still going to have that same issue of you could end up cutting out your little numbers instead. So what we need to do is we need to be a little bit clever about it. So I'm going to go OK. I'm going to go back. So we've still got our scan on the mat. Now, if I click on the group and go to Edit, Object Edit, Resize, it's going to give me the size of the outer dimensions, which gives me the size of my triangle. So, if I write this down, which is why I keep a, a lovely pack of scrap paper by my side, I can go that it's 40 tall by 45 wide. We'll go OK, 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 add, pattern, basic shapes, we're going to go down to our rounded triangle and we're going to set that down to 40 by 45. And add that onto the mat. We can bring that down. Now this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky. So I'm going to go into edit, move. I'm going to nudge it with my keys. I'm going to zoom down to the bottom. One, down to the bottom, down, 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 down. There we go. So, there's our triangle. We're going to go nudge that so that it's as close as possible to being directly over the top. And if you can't quite get it there, then no worries, because we've got that red outline that's going to stick back over the top. Now, without clicking on anything, go OK, OK, then we're going to use our arrow keys up here to make sure that we select that back group. And you'll notice that red line shifted just a fraction. We can delete out that group and we're left with just our triangle. So now we can pop our blade back in. So, OK, OK, cut, and off we go.
hole. It was doing so well up to that point. Quick cutting. Naughty, naughty card. Okay. Let's get you stuck back down. And it's calibration still off a bit here. Yeah. I'm going to do it twice this morning. Right. Now, let's try that again. Once more, big feeling. Now, it has snagged a little bit of our design, but I think when it's on the the finished layout, you're probably not going to see that anyway. So, we can just go with it. Save redoing that last step. So, off we go. Close enough. Okay, so now we can peel off all our bits and pieces. Yes, please. So we have. Yeah, there we go. Did a lovely job of cutting where you don't want it to cut. <laughs> We can take off our waist and you can still use those other bits for something else. So I'm terrible for not throwing anything away. Even with the arrow out of the centre, we can use that elsewhere on the layout. We have our outside triangle, and we can use the inner one for something else. We have our white circles so these bits are probably scrap because you, there isn't much you could do with them then we have our traffic lights so again we'll do a little bit of inking with those just keeping an eye on the time then we've got our order to go around a traffic light and we might use up something else so I'll keep that for now. I'll outline and keep that centre circle for something else. And again these little pieces apart from that centre stripe. Probably not what you can do with them. No, you want the red ones not the uh, centre stripe. For is it? Is it a red sign with a white stripe? Is it red sign, white stripe? Okay. In which case then, yep, the other way around. Yeah, my brain's going, are you sure? Hmm. Are you sure about that? Nope. <sighs> so which is it? No entry. <laughs> What, what's the consensus? <laughs> is it that it is? Yes, that, one. that one. With the... Over the top. Yeah, so when you see it, you go, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Your brain's going... <laughs> right. So let's put those together with a little bit of glue. Before we do any kind of inking. Let's do the no entry one first. I <laughs> can see that's the one that's making us go. You sure that's right? So, let's try that one on there. So, remember, we did it this way because you haven't got subtract on your machine. So, Oh, that's, that's really straight would be a good idea. 
This is why we use wet glue rather than tape so that you have wiggle room. Mm -hmm. Someone has very lovely drawings here. <laughs> What's that? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was our, our, our quick little. Yeah, that was our quick sketch, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it's something like that, I don't tend to, to worry too much. I'll just go like that, like that, like that. Mm -hmm. There we go. So, one no entry. Then we've got our black centre stripe. Yeah, I was about to say, don't stick it straight enough, but you can turn the circle. <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> you turn the circle, not the stripe. <laughs> yeah, it is a funny one to get your head around that, isn't it? My brain was one step behind my mouth. Right, okay, so now to do our little border around our traffic light. So with the sections in our lights, I'm actually going to be doing a little bit of inking to go behind those, so that it looks like our green is going to be lit. Next for our triangle, huh? What? Yeah, I was going to make it look like the, the red and the amber aren't it and the green is. <sighs> that was what I was thinking anyway. Mm -hmm. There we go. So there's our triangle. And our one way. So this one we cut out of the blue. Number one, it saves you having to have a natural layer of white. And it's a good technique to use whenever you're cutting out something detailed today. It's got a there we go. So because it's got that little bit just there, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a trim. The one yeah, just the one out of all those pieces. Really weird. Mm. Do, do, do. Yeah, the calibration was still off. I thought it would have been on all of them. Yeah. yeah. There we go. So that's not too bad, me thinks. Move you. Yeah, he'll grade it down a little bit. Is it a little Stop bit? Camera. Okay. There we go. So with our traffic light, we've got two options. You can do your ink blending onto the white section out of the middle of your border and then pop it on. Or you can do it with three different pieces of card. So originally what I was thinking was to do it with colours, but I'm looking at that thinking actually. I could just do it with that. So, got time, haven't we? Um, yeah, that's 25 minutes. Yeah. So, let's go for... Candy Dapple. And I want the dark colours to go over the top, so I'm going to go age mahogany. So your oxide will be opaque, but your ink will be translucent. Then I need an amber. So he's not like fossilized amber or something bright. I'm gonna go spice marmalade, I think. Um, let's do that the way around. So I'm gonna go for the oxide 
Spice Marmalade and Pink Cracking Camphor and Green. Green's going to be a challenge. So I'm going to go Rustic Wilderness for my dark tone. Now this one, because we want it to look like it's lit, we can go a lot lighter. So I'm going to go Mow Lawn and I might even is a touch of let's go pill paint okay so i am going to do my oxides first and just because we're working in a smaller area rather than using blending brushes i'm going to use a sponge so if i can just have those out the way for a second here thank you i need there we go have sponges to match <laughs> so, first of all the red so this is candied apple So far, perfect. Then I'm going to go to the next oxide, and this is spice marmalade. Now, remember, these are opaque, which means that if we do go accidentally into the area of the next one, we can go and blend over the top, and it won't make too much difference. So, red amber, and now I'm going to go to the peeled paint. And I'm going to use a fairly light hand for this one. So if your blend's looking streaky, just be bear with it and you'll get there eventually. So mode lawn, I'm going to just bring in from the edges. So the idea being, I'm going to try and make it look like it's lighter in the middle. theory there we go so so far so good so lids back on the oxides because you don't want them to dry out and you also don't want to accidentally mix them I'm going to grab a piece of kitchen towel thank you and a little bit of water and I'm going to clean the oxides off my mat first It is one of the, those uh, occupational hazards that <laughs> painting your fingers with the oxides. There we go. So with that done, I'm going to get a little detail brush, and now we can use our inks. So let's start off with our green. And I'm going to bring that. From the Outside in to start with. Now, pop your traffic light over the top. Just check you're not going to accidentally 
shade something in. Don't mean to. I'm just going to cut a line across the top there so it looks like we've got this lighter area in the middle. And again, you can just go around the outside to blend that in. Like so. Let's get my kitchen down. Put the lid back on that one. Give it a quick wipe. So, I'm going to do the same to my brush. Just because it's green. And I'm going to go into the aged mahogany next for the red. So it won't hurt too much. There's still some of that green in there. It's just going to tone that aged mahogany a bit. And we're going to do the same again. So from the outside, a little bit more ink. So with these we can go an awful lot darker. Because they're not lit. Cut across that bottom section there. Like so, and then use what's left on the mat to just blend in around those edges. Okay, next one done. So again, get the kitchen towel, give them that clean. campfire now this is going to be strong so blot first then we're going to take a little bit at a time and build it up so crackling campfire is actually a red tone but as it starts to break down and gets paler it breaks out into some lovely orange and yellow tones so it's quite good for doing something like this Deepest at the top and bottom. And there we go. So there's a traffic light. Our well, green could do with being a little bit brighter. So let's give it a helping hand. my mat. Let's grab yellow sponge and let's go for twisted citron. This is going to be lifting up those colours, so I'm just going to tap it on. So I'm not trying to blend it, I'm just literally tapping it on and letting the ink do its own blending. So a bit more just in that middle section. There we go. If need be, you can go back in with a bit of the rustic wilderness just to turn that back down but before I do let's just check that in there let's do 
one more little uh, right in the middle. little shading just around those edges okay need them okay so usually what I'd say is if you've done something like this where you've inked up particularly with oxides Give it a little bit of time to dry before trying to stick it, and you'll find it sticks much better. But just because of time, I'll stick it now so that you can see it in one piece. So, let's grab my glue. I'm going to apply the glue to the back of my traffic light. Doesn't take very much with this one, so... You can just do some little bits like so. Over we go. Make sure you get the right way up. <laughs> Don't be daft. <laughs> oh dear, that was slightly off wonky. There we go. That's you distracting me being silly, that is. Okay, so now with that in there, need to make it a little pool. I know I need to do some little pools. Uh, so that can be the best colour. That was more promising. Let's go for that one because that's lighter. There we go. So there we go. And let's grab a lemon as well. So you won't want to use white at this point. So they're going onto the scrapbook layout that we started for Lucy because you passed the driving test. So I'm just going to dot in that lemon and then let it all dry before you try and do anything else to it because there's nothing worse than having got that far and then putting your finger in it. I can't tell you haven't put a bird nesting in the traffic lights. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of white just there. Just lift it up. There we go. Hold on the graffiti. <laughs> <laughs> I could do the graffiti. I, I, I found some stamps in my stash the other day that are graffiti ones. So that oh, could look quite cool on the background, I think. So what I will do is I will put that all together tomorrow and you can see what the rest of the layout's going to look like. So, take care for now and we are back tomorrow at 12. 12. There you go. So this week we're varying the times to see what interaction we get and which time's the best for us. So, see you at 12. Don't forget Barbara. Yep, so Barbara's about to go live we think. <laughs> we think, for sure. And, and Leslie back at half twelve? No, no, Leslie's just going once this week and that was yesterday. So if you missed Leslie, go back and catch up because she was showing some more of the samples. So, bye for now. Take care and bye.